Hello, I'm Bill Harris, and welcome to Life Questions, a weekly half-hour program that focuses on issues from a biblical perspective. It might surprise some people to know that the Word of God, though written thousands of years ago, over a 1,500-year period, addresses many of the current issues we face today. And if you don't believe it, stick around. Let me introduce you to our panel of experts who, incidentally, will not only be answering my questions, but also the questions that you, the viewers, have sent us. They are local pastors who address biblical concerns every Sunday from their pulpit. Our first panelist is Pastor Russ uh, Thomas, and he is of the Gathering Place and New, Crea uh, New Creation Lutheran Church of Elida, Ohio, followed by Pastor Darnell Williams of New Life, Christ uh, New Life Church International. And finally, rounding off our panel is Pastor Brandon Green of Calvary Chapel of Praise in Lima. Now today's topics include addictions and also anger and forgiveness. Let's begin with addictions because, you know, we're, we're seeing that the latest thing on the scene that everybody's talking about now is the, the opioids. And I was mentioning to a friend of mine that we are in a situation in this country right now where more people have died of opioids um, or addictions over a one year period than died in the entire 10 year period of the Vietnam War wow. that killed 58,000. Mm. Um, wow. What's making for that? Give us a little bit about the ministry you have, if you will, Pastor Thomas, and how you're addressing this issue. Okay, so um, that's the first I'd heard that statistic. That's stunning, but um, one of the things that got me involved in addiction ministry, recovery ministry, um, Back in 2006, I'd lost my leg to an accident. And um, at that point, I'd already been on 12 Vicodins a day for a year and a half with the first six surgeries. Surgery number seven, they amputated my right leg and um, I found out what withdrawal was. <clears throat> and I understand the, um, the trials of withdrawal because it was during a five day withdrawal period of no sleep that um, I was attempting to break into Shredeman's drugstore in Walpawkinet, Ohio. And that's where I met the Lord Jesus Christ in the mm -hmm. parking lot there. So. Um, I was still an addict for two more years, but I started chasing that voice that spoke to me that night and uh, developed a ministry of recovery. And um, what I'm seeing today, to follow up on your question, what I'm seeing today is um, the synthetics that are uh, especially coming from China that are uh, really invading the, the market because they're using these synthetics at a lower cost, higher potency, and they cut it mm. into what they're currently doing to increase their product, to increase their, their, their uh, their income. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of folks are injecting things that they have no idea what they're injecting. Goodness gracious. So you, so you were experienced it firsthand and now you're able to help others. Yes. And is there a common thread that runs through the addiction problem here in that people are seeking for something or is it an economic problem? Uh, as a social problem? What is it? What, what's, how do you put your thumb on it? Uh, to generically cover it, I see it as an escape from, from life problems. Mm -hmm. And um, to me, the, you know, in, the, in all the years that I've been doing this, um, the, the biggest success story is the Savior. Uh, mm -hmm. You yes. know, because a lot of times there's so many people who have been through life's trials that have put them in a place where they're at that they're seeking some escape. Mm -hmm. And um, once you can back them up in time and find out what it is that brought them to that state, you can correct the future. So mm -hmm. um, it's only through forgiveness. It's only through um, strength and the only way that I found it was through a savior and then the benefit of that was I was set free from many other things off on the side that I didn't even realize I was being set free from so he is a great savior mm -hmm. yes me. To, to think that God does forgive people who are addicted to drugs yes. Pastor. Mm -hmm. amen well all of us are in need of forgiveness mm -hmm. all yeah. of us are in need of forgiveness you know Russ you brought up a very interesting point uh, I heard a statistic that says Ohio leads the nation not per capita but total and overdoses. Mm -hmm. That's I mean, that's right here in, in, in our neighborhoods are where the problems are coming home and becoming real to us. And we have to be ministers that preach hope yes. and give people something to believe that no matter how bad or difficult today looks, tomorrow can be better. Mm -hmm. And, and I would imagine the approach toward this problem is different per ministry. I mean, mm -hmm. yes. you, you don't have the same experience he has. You don't have the same right. experience that he has. Yes. Uh, but as you just mentioned, you, you, you've got to get out in ministry. You've got to do something That's about right. it. Yes. Right? That's right. Yes. What, what do you have to say about that, Pastor? Well, you know, <clears throat> I feel like um, oftentimes we can just hang our heads as the church and label 
them as, you know, unreachable. But we have to believe that the same Jesus that was laid up in a cold slab for three days, that same power was able to go after Jesus and resurrect him, that there is no power on earth that a spiritual power can um, be broken by the prayer and by uh, declaring hope over someone. So yes. what we do uh, at the church is we continue to tell everyone that that isn't struggling because we all struggle with something. Sure. Keep coming back. Yes. Keep keep returning. You, you messed up. That, that's okay. We we can love you back to life. Yes. We just all of us need somebody to believe in us. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. You know, I, I keep thinking about um, your comment about the people that are unreachable. When Jesus approached that man who had been living in the tomb, yeah, there right. was a man that, <laughs> that was, was unreachable. unreachable <laughs> yeah. You know. But he did it. Yes. Th th does that provide encouragement to you, gentlemen, mm, yes. and all as you minister in the communities? Yes, it does. Um, you think about <clears throat> that situation in particular. You know, we, we look at cutting, for instance. You know, a lot of folks that I, I work with in, in addiction are also cutters. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of times... Define cutters. Okay, a cutter is someone who will actually cut the flesh. And, and th the more conversations I have, I find that it's, it's linked to pain, emotional pain. That's right. And yes. so what Ooh. happens is... is I'm, being, I'm having emotional pain inflicted on me that I don't understand. I can't see why it's happening. So cutting is a way to be able to visualize the pain that's emotional mm. that they, they, don't, they can't quite grasp or contra comprehend. So everybody has an outlet or an escape. Some it's cutting, some it's addiction, some it's both cutting and addiction. Wow. Wow. Even the man so. in the tomb. He was, was cutting, cutting himself. himself. I never, so I never never old business. That. My <laughs> goodness. This That's has right. been going on for a long time. It's demonic. It's unclean. Mm -hmm. And uh, a savior is the only way to be set free yes. from it. Yeah. Um, yes. Many times it's, it's the unclean forces that, are, that, that cause division in families. And um, when, when my ministry started, it was more aimed at the addict. But being as I was a 48-year-old addict, I became a, an addict at 48 years old. Um, I guess maybe one of the gifts that God has given me is be able to minister to the parents of addicts. So I, it's a two-sided coin. I try to minister to the parents to maintain that bond of love yeah. without causing yes. mm -hmm. a separation or enabling. How um, there's a fine do, balance. How do you, I mean, it's about that much difference between the two. Yeah. How do you do that? Well, there's many different ways. Um, of course, love conquers all. And most yeah. addicts that I've seen reach recovery is because of a, of a loved one who did not give up on them, That's but, right. but yeah. knew how to not enable. Um, my mentor and, and former pastor, Neil Whitney, um, he, he once ver verbalized a seesaw and the center point, the pivot point, the mm -hmm. fulcrum was the, the absolute truth. And this was so effective to me that um, I had a mother uh, one day whose daughter was 39 and, and had been in addiction over a decade. And uh, part of it was the mother's enabling, but she couldn't stop, it was an only child. I wouldn't stop either. So um, there's, a church, there's a school on Kibbe Street that still has a seesaw. There's not too many left, but there we sat in the rain on a seesaw one day. And she, uh, I explained that center point being that the, the biblical absolute truth. Mm -hmm. And I had her start slowly coming towards me as we seesawed. And she started to realize that the closer she came to me, mm -hmm. it was, she could mm -hmm. still raise me up, but it was more and more difficult. Mm -hmm. And then when mm -hmm. I had her across that, that center point of absolute truth yeah. where uh, she crossed the line to enabling. Now we're both down and there's no one on the other side to lift either one of us back up. Yes. Very mm -hmm. powerful message. We left soaking wet, but she was in tears and she got <laughs> it. Um, she's still enabling, but she got the message. Yeah. And that's a seed that I can plant that all I can do is get out of the way and let God do what God does. Excellent. Yeah, mm. that's excellent. Any other experiences that, that you generally want to talk about? You know, I, I just find today people you deal with addiction. We're dealing with an increase in suicide now. Yeah. You're dealing with dysfunctional behaviors. It seems like people have lost the ability to cope. Mm -hmm. and, and part of uh, contemporary 21st century ministry is we got to give people coping skills mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. to know how to deal with Amen. stress, to know how yes. to deal with the pressures of life. I think we've, we've forgotten the, the cathartic nature of prayer and worship and living mm -hmm. in community mm -hmm. with other believers. And so I think people are just trying to find ways to cope. We're just um, bombarded with so much wrong in the world and negativity and, and we're looking for a way to deal with reality yes. and not escape it. That's yeah. right, that's right. You know, I um, encourage our church to really look after the ones that maybe struggle with, if it's addiction or whether it's self-esteem issues or 
hopelessness of all kinds. We're, we're all talking about pain and how, how do we process and handle pain. Some of these, um, you would say they were weak in the faith. And uh, I liken to it like they're in the incubators, if you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, they're just struggling. Uh, but just like in the natural, um, sometimes we need to nourish them through our faith, through our experience, yeah. yep. to declare that I, I know what you've been through. I, I, I've been there. Borrow my faith, if you will, and, and see that I came through on the other side of this. And we need more of that in the church and, and, and less judgmentalness. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think you hit a major key right there. <laughs> it, it, it's so easy to sit on that seat and with a gavel as a judge, sure. is it not? Absolutely. Because, you yeah. know, you're not like me. And, and we tend to forget, I guess, where we came from. Right. It may right. not have been the same that's thing, right. That's right. but we, we had some dirty issues as that's well. That's right. Oh, that's that's right. Sad. That's right. Mm -hmm. Are you are you teaching on those kind of things? I mean, it's, uh, what do you say to a person to get them not to be judgmental and to think of others that that are still growing like they are, mm -hmm. and nobody's arrived? Mm -hmm. What do you say? Yeah, you know, Jesus told Peter. He said, "Satan desires to sift you as wheat." Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And he says, "And I prayed for you, not that you can avoid being sifted." That's but right. that your faith they won't fail. fail. Yep. Yes. And then he says to him, and when you come through, come through it, when mm. you get over it, yeah. be a strength to yes. your brothers. <laughs> yes. You know, and I think we, we've, we need to encourage each other to hold each other's hands up. That's and right. The theme of our church this year is, is together, mm -hmm. together. Together. Mm -hmm. And we're going to walk together and take journeys together and stand with each other together. Mm -hmm. And there's strength when we do it together. Yeah. Faith wasn't meant to be practiced in silos or alone right. or uh, absent and void of relationships. Excellent you need point. community. Excellent mm -hmm. Amen. Point. Yeah. Amen. That, that, that community is so important, that relational experience. Mm -hmm. No man is an island, no right? Man That's is right. An island. No man That's right. We need each other. So um, do, you have, uh, do you have a set program for people that are coming into your church with addiction problems, a, a process you take them through? Or how does it work when people come there? Yeah, um, we tried many different programs. Um, Celebrate Recovery is sort of my foundation. It's a faith-based, um, Christ-centered program. Um, I still don't practice it in theory, mm -hmm. but um, the steps I use on a daily basis, that's a powerful program. I believe most of them programs were geared to learn from and then apply them to our life, not necessarily adhere to the curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the process in Celebrate Recovery plays out the same as it does in Scripture and um, in our church too. The, the process is simply first love the hell out of them mm -hmm. and bring them to a point to where they understand that there is relief at the foot of the cross. Yes. And mm -hmm. uh, many times when I come across someone who's lost in that same woods of addiction, that, that wilderness of addiction that I was in, um, and I teach this so much, the, the, you know, the, the, the sowing of the seed is so important because once I'm led out of that wilderness and that path always leads to the foot of the cross, then yeah, success is made and I'm free. Now I can just go ahead and, and squander that to myself or I can, now that I know the path, I need to go back into that woods, find that next person who's addicted and lead them out to yeah. the foot of the cross. And if we keep playing that process over and over again, like, like Pastor Darnell said, you know, it's, it's community, it's unity. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and until yes. we can break down the walls of, of denomination and break down the walls of, of isolation, we're That's never right. gonna make it. We're That's never right. going to make it. The, the, we amputate Christ's body many, many times, and we need wow. to unify yeah. and prevent that. Wow. <laughs> very well said, very well said. You know, I, I, when we come back in a moment, I'd like to talk about something that, that, that can be related, and that is anger yes. and the need for forgiveness because yes. sometimes yeah. a person that is angry is pushed into addiction. Yes. 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 yes, yes. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back in just a moment to talk about anger and forgiveness. Stay with us. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back and uh, having some good discussion here. We're turning our attention now to the subjects of anger mm -hmm. 
and forgiveness. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the Bible says, be angry and sin, sin not. not. I mean, that's right. one scripture yes. that comes to mind. And there are certainly incidences of uh, how anger has taken a toll. Look at how Cain killed his, his own oh, brother, the yes. first murder in recorded history. Uh, Moses had some bouts with anger yes. yeah. along the way. Uh, gentlemen, would you, would you say that anger has played a major role in some of the social problems that we see uh, manifested uh, on the world stage today? And, 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 and how, how would you pinpoint them and come behind that with solutions? Anybody? Okay, so I guess I get with, with the recovery ministry that the anger sometimes spawns post issue. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It comes from a parent maybe not meeting the needs of a child who's demanding something that uh, related to their, their, to their addiction. So I always see anger as a byproduct of the current situation and the other pastors may have a different mm -hmm. experience in their, minis their ministries. Yeah, it's the way you've experienced That's it. That's what I've least. experienced. Yeah. Yeah, the anger right. comes post issues. Okay. It's important, I believe, that we identify our triggers yeah. when we're dealing with anger and to realize that Anger is not a primary emotion, it's a secondary, secondary emotion. emotion that's right. That it, it primarily begins with grief and realizing what is it that wounded you? Mm -hmm. What is it that wasn't healed? Mm -hmm. What is it that you need to go back and address? You, you can't do anything with an angry person. I, I grew up in a household of nine kids, so we were brawling all the time, you, you know. And uh, Mom, you know, she stayed at home while dad was out and, uh, you know, she would try to pull us apart and, you know, get us to try to calm down. It, there wasn't a whole lot you could do with us when we were angry. But I do realize this. If you can get an angry person into the presence of the Lord, in that presence, God is able to melt down the anger and it returns to its original state, which is grief. Mm -hmm. And grief mm -hmm. can be comforted by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. And I've seen that time and time again, Absolutely. where the grief is able to be ministered to. You can't do anything in the stage of anger, but if you can get it into the presence of God, get them to begin to confess and begin to realize, I'm angry because uh -huh. yes. God can begin to minister to that area in their, in their heart. Yeah. You know, Pastor Brandon, that's my testimony. I was, I was an angry young man. 16 years old. I grew up in a single parent home. Mm -hmm. uh, my father was a Vietnam veteran. He uh, came home, um, you know, one of the shattered men of the, as a result of the yes. Vietnam yes. War. Couldn't, again, coping skills, didn't have skills to cope, gave yeah. himself to a life of addiction. Yeah. And I was angry. I was angry because I was fatherless. I was angry mm -hmm. because I saw the difficulty and the challenges my mother went through as a single parent. Angry. Mm -hmm. Just, be, just with myself and felt like life wasn't worth living. And mm -hmm. I arrived at the foot of the cross. Somebody told me about the love of Jesus and that anger was able to be washed away. Mm -hmm. And the Lord gave me the ability to enter life with a sense of purpose and meaning. So boy, boy. he is a deliverer. Yes, yes. he is. And, and, and I bring this whole question of anger up because this is a question that we have gotten from viewers wanting to know how to deal with this. And, and, and it has to be dealt with anger very, uh, very uh, lightly, very sensitively, I should put it that way. I look at before God, or rather before uh, Cain killed his brother Abel, God identified the anger in Cain and he confronted him lovingly. Yeah. Yes. And if you yeah. read along Genesis chapter 4 verses 5, 6, 7 along there, God counsels him on how to handle his anger. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because mm -hmm. he, he, he would have nothing to do with it and it resulted in murder. But um, how do you approach somebody that's angry? How do you minister? Like you said, while they're angry, there's really virtually nothing you yes. can do. Right. But right. once they calm down, then what do you do? How, how, how do you try to take that, the ignition of anger and just snuff yeah. that out? Yeah. You know, you, you, it's difficult to have a rational conversation with an emotional person. That's mm -hmm. absolutely true. Mm -hmm. you, you, it's almost impossible. You've got to get the emotion dealt with. Uh -huh. one, one of the things that I find is happening today, the root of anger, the root of bitterness, and though we're going to talk about unforgiveness, mm -hmm. really goes back to being offended. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at Cain and mm -hmm. Abel, mm -hmm. you see this offense that Cain has. Oh, yeah. Uh, he feels God disregards him. He yeah. feels his brother disregards him. Mm -hmm. and, and so from that opens up this kind of rage and wrath yeah. and, 
and almost being out of control yeah. with, with this fueled uh, anger that ends up taking his brother's life. And some of it was really in Cain's mind, wasn't yes. it? Yes, absolutely. You know, like he, he fell upstage by his brother, <laughs> but his right. brother wasn't trying to upstage exactly. him. And God wasn't trying to reject him per se. He said, if you go back and make a sacrifice that meets my, my specifications, I'll accept I'll it. Accept it. Right. I'll accept That's it. Right. I feel like a lot of the times, uh, if you could pinpoint it, it comes down to the word disappointment. Mm -hmm. yeah. We oh, have yeah. expectations on people, and I had an appointment with you that you didn't keep. I expected you, you were going to do this for me, you were going to do that for me, but you didn't keep that appointment. And so what it, it does, it leads us to the dis words. Yes. I get disillusioned, the illusion is gone now. Uh, I get depressed. Mm -hmm. uh, and so all these emotions begin to build within me because maybe perhaps my expectation was in the wrong place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and I realized that, you know, maybe Father wasn't able to do for me because he did the best that he knew how. <coughs> he, 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 he did what he could do. Maybe my expectation should be on the Lord Jesus Christ and take all that pressure off of people to perform yes. and to be for me who I want them to be. And maybe they're just showing, you know, this is who they really are. This is what they can give to me. And, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's sometimes hard for people to deal with that disappointment. Yes. Uh, you talked about offense and um, being bivocational. I'm also the executive director of Family Promise, um, Lima Island County. It's a homeless shelter for families. And um, we see folks coming in and at the height of their brokenness and, mm -hmm. and being offended. Yes. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things that we do is start to have conversations to find out. We don't really address the current behavior because it's always driven by something else. So we yes. try to find out what happened, what happened to bring them to their current behavior. And many times through that process of questioning and helping, we start to see triggers just from the very questions we ask, mm -hmm. they yes. go into defense mode because mm -hmm. that's where they've been for quite a while now, being yeah. worried about how, how are my children gonna sleep? How are they going to eat? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, many times the offense, Pastor Donna, you both said it's the same thing. It, it comes from the past. We have to go back and find out what that was and start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. In our program, we got 90 days to do it. So mm -hmm. um, we're just a, a puzzle piece in this, but mm -hmm. um, my goodness, the pruning, sends branches to go different directions. Yeah. And that's really all we can do is start a branch in a new direction and hope that consequence causes change. Mm -hmm. But the offense is the key though, because through questioning, you can see triggers that yes. come up that you didn't know you're even gonna pull. Yes. Well, in, the, in the limited time we have, uh, let's move to the area of unforgiveness. Wow. Well, <laughs> forgiving somebody that has offended you. And, yes. and I've often said that when you refuse to forgive that person that offended you, it's like you taking a bottle of poison and yes. turning it up, mm -hmm. drinking it you down, drink it. hoping that the other guy will die. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how ridiculous is that? Yes. But it's not quite that simple, though, in forgiveness, because they're going to say, well, you know, you don't know what he did. You don't yes. know what he said to me. You don't know what she, how she treated me. Yes. Uh, how do you bring about this, this, this area of being forgiving and not holding that grudge yeah. uh, forever? Go ahead, Pastor. I was just going to say, I believe that forgiveness is a choice. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the times I've had to walk in forgiveness by faith. Yes. The feelings will catch up eventually, right. but it does take time. But we've got to stop giving our emotional power away to those who offended us, those who I wounded like us, yeah. by continuing to rehearse the offense. And so if we and What can, do you mean by rehearse the offense? going back into the theater of our mind and replaying that incident over and over and over. It's almost like you've got to change the tape in the reel of your mind. <laughs> and you've got to begin to bring it um, to the cross. Yes. You've got to ask the blood of Jesus to cover that offense. Ask the Holy Spirit to come in and minister to that area to where uh, someone let you down, they, they broke your heart. and then ask God to replace that with what his picture is. Uh, what, is what do you want to do with this? Acknowledge that it happened, but how, how God do you want to use this? How can this become a testimony? Mm -hmm. And so I stop holding people accountable for that sin. And I begin to say, you know what? I'm going to release them. I'm going to walk by faith in yes. forgiveness and stop giving away my emotional power. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because it will weary you. Yeah. You'll have no oh, strength. Yeah to fight today's battles. Yes. 
you know, one of the bondages is unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Pastor. Go ahead. And, uh, you know, when I read uh, Jesus and his interaction with everyone, he asks question after question after question. And, and when, when I sit down with a client, especially in the shelter, and, and ask them questions, um, I gear the questions towards the offender that has put them in that, peer, that, that that's period of unforgiveness. And then I let them, I point out their emotion. And I tell them, I ask them, you're obviously emotional from that person and what they did to you. Right now, are they even thinking of you? And mm -hmm. they'll say, of course, no. no. And, and they're not even here, but they've got your emotions in bondage that's through right. that unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. And then st right. they start to realize that, that uh, I tell them, you're a slave to them. Right. You're basically yes. a slave right. to them emotionally. Right. And that's where the, the starting point comes to find to let that go, mm -hmm. to lead them to the foot of the cross, to Amen. find that, that unforgiveness, which now deals with the initial, what you talked about, the grief. Mm -hmm. so. Amen. I've seen that slavery mentality work to the point where a person can be having a good time surrounded by friends in mm -hmm. the room with them, everybody that loves them. And then that person that offended them happens to walk, walk in the room the door. Right. and it changes True. everything. Yes. 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 And like you said, they're yes. a slave to that yes. person. Exactly. All they have to do is walk in the room and everything yes. changes, you know. Yes. But I want to ask you to address this. I think it's in Isaiah, I think it is, where, where God says to Israel, I forgive you for my own sake. Yes, yes. sir. Mm. You know, yes. even God realizes it's not a good thing to yeah. hold that yes. stuff inside of yes. you. That's right. Exactly. Getting the person, I mean, and yeah. God's role modeling that for us. How, how, do, you, how do you bring the person to it's that? It's liberating. It's freeing. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus' words on the cross, Father, forgive them. Yes. Mm. Forgive them. You know, so forgiveness, I don't do for the benefit of the other person. I do it for my own sake, okay. mm -hmm. to, so I can stay healthy, so I can stay healed. And you know, t today, there's this subtlety with, I, you know, the personal interaction, social media. It's just heightened almost our awareness of interactions, interpersonal interactions. And I think that's opened the door now mm -hmm. for us to misread cues and to mm -hmm. misunderstand yes. signals and yes. to um, uh, think someone means something nefarious when it might be very innocent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus gave us the answer. He said, if you think this is going on, go to your brother. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we don't do that. We, we, we tell everybody else. Yeah. And, and we wait for them to come back because for after all, come. they offended right. us. Yes. And, and God says, no, you go, you to, go them. to them. Yeah. Right. And if we would follow that model, I believe it would be Absolutely. freeing and liberating. For Absolutely. Us. So as a new pastor, Very can quickly. I ask a question? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, as we practice what we preach, how do, how do pastors find forgiveness and the very people that they're serving, because I struggle <laughs> yeah. many times. Very quick with the answers, we're almost out of time. I feel this, um, I'm, I'm getting to the point in my ministry, uh, I've been in full-time ministry since 2003, that people aren't wicked, they're weak. Hmm. And if I could begin to forgive my debtors, as I've been forgiven, yes. as Jesus t tells yes. us to do, Amen. it's empowering me so that I can open up my heart to other relationships, or else I'll, I'll be walled off. Yeah, very good, Amen. very well put. Well, listen, Praise we're gonna God. we're gonna have to end it at that, gentlemen. I want to thank you for being with us. Could you just take just ten seconds to to, to to mention where your ministry is for those that are addicted? 109 West Main Street, Elida, next to the fire station. And your church and address is Calvary Chapel of Praise, 1601 Rebecca Drive. And yours? 1180 West High Street, on the corner of Cole and High, New Life Church International. All right, gentlemen, we thank you very much for being with us today. Join us again next week at the same time on the same station where we'll have more information about life issues and how to resolve them. Till then, I'm Bill Harris. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.